Hello YouTube, hello Catanians. We're back, we're playing Basic Catan once again. And I apologize because for some reason the in-game audio is just gone on this gameplay. I record all the games the same way I've always done, but for whatever reason maybe I had the the iPhone, you know, ringer on silent because you have to take it off silent to get the audio. But usually I always do and I remember there being audio when I was playing the game. Who knows? Anyways, we are starting out with six different numbers in this gameplay and just adding another layer of strategy to your Catan gameplay. Diversify your numbers. I never really pay attention to it. I just try to get like the good ones, like, you know, five, six, eight, nine, and just get as many of those as I can to start out with and then build to other good numbers. But if you start out with six different numbers, you'd be surprised how much it helps you. And I also kind of double down where I diversify my numbers and I diversify my resources. So you'll see I have the eight stone, the four or five wheat, great numbers for resources that will also help me with building cities mainly i mean development cards too but because you'll see i get that six sheep three brick 11 wood on the other starting settlement but the eight four five and once i get a city on that they don't just be rolling with the stone and the wheat i'll be good to go and i guess as an afterthought i'll get my roads going because a 3 and 11 are not that good, ideally, for getting roads. But as you may have found in your experiences playing Catan Universe, sometimes the dice rolls are just all over the place. They don't make any sense when thinking about the probability of certain dice rolls. But that's just another story for another time. So you'll see with my... Because I went first, it it snaked back around to me. So I placed my second starting settlement after everyone else did. And I placed my road in such a way that I would immediately cut off blue. Because I wanted to get to that 4 brick 11 wood. Just to have more brick coming in. And more wood on the off chance 11s were getting rolled kind of consistent in this game. Which surprisingly they kind of did. So by doing your second starting settlement on a brick and a wood. You guarantee on your very first roll you can immediately build a road because you're going to get those resources from that placement and you can guarantee that you can shut someone off you can cut them off and then build a road to that area that you want to build to that they also wanted to build to so blue instead went over to the three for one port over on the other side of your screen for the three wood and the six wood and that was a smart move because you know, instead of trying to go around the other way, around that four brick on the right side of the screen and try to fight me over to that spot, he just said, I'm not going to get mad. I'm just going to play it cool. I'm going to play it smart. And I'm going to build just a better area in general, plus a 3 for one port. Although blue was going up to that eight wood for the 3 for one port, I think he's just trying to go for more wood. But getting two 3 for one ports is redundant. Just get one and you'll be fine. I would have thought... That because Blue had so much wood going on over on the left side of the screen, he would have gone down to the four brick and got the sheep port instead. Although he is built on zero sheep hexes, so the sheep port's not going to help him out. But the four brick is going to help him out to have a kind of an even amount of brick and wood coming in. Now Asian Bob left the game very sad as an 11 gets rolled and as Asian Bob builds a city on an 8 stone 10 brick which I kind of wanted to build on that spot, but he chose to put one of his starting settlements there. Very smart move for the computer. And essentially kind of cut me off from going anywhere down in that area because you also have red on the nine stone five wheat coming in from the other side. So I, I would need to get two roads and build them on the same turn to snake down to cut red off down to the nine stone ten brick. But it's not likely because... I'm just trying to do other things at the same time. Plus, you'll see what I have in my hand right now. I have three stone and two wheat, so I'm going to build a city on the eight stone, four wheat, five wheat to get that going. As blue, 
just builds the settlement on the other three for one port. So blue is a bunch of wheat. I'm sorry, wood coming in, but too bad for him. I am blocking him from ever getting to the wood port down on the 11 wood, 12 sheep. So eventually I will get shut off by red going down to the nine stone, 10 brick, which is okay. I mean, I really wanted it, but I'll just have to focus on other parts of the board as I get shut down and I get taken from. Now you'll notice a running theme in this game and kind of a lot of my games where if someone places the robber on a certain hex, like for example that eight stone, you'll see at one point in the game I'll have two wheat and one stone and then all I needed was an eight dice roll to get two more stone, have three stone to be able to build my city but because the robber is on that particular spot, out of all the other hexes on the board, I get prevented from, in the next turn, building what I was planning on building. So it's just really funny how it works out that way, and convenient to all the other players except for me. And now I'm going to take a roll. I'm going to roll a five, and what do you know? My five is shut down, exactly what we were just talking about. And threes were decent in this game, so... Blue has a three wood, I have a three brick, but blue also is on the three brick. So every time a three is rolled, blue essentially gets a fr uh, road to build. And if blue upgrades both of those to cities, that's two roads per every three roll, which is very nice. I always like to build uh, settlements that have a, a brick and a wood of the same number especially in Cities and Knights, because you can use Alchemist to play that number, to force that number to be rolled, and then essentially get guarantee yourself roads for that turn. It's uh, very nice. So at this point, I got my one city. I got my two settlements. I am looking to get another city before I keep expanding out with roads and settlements. Because you want the cities first, you want to build those up, you want to build up before you build out. Because if you build out, you are taking over other areas of the board, but I think it takes longer to build yourself up to win the game. Because if you build up, in terms of building cities before your settlements, then every time those numbers are getting rolled, you're getting double of what you would have got just with settlements. So I, I try to do that, but sometimes it's just you got to go by what resources coming in based on your rules. So if you're just getting a lot of brick and wood and then, you know, a few sheep, few wheat here and there, then it's a good idea to build out, build more roads and settlements. But I honestly think the building up the, the cities first before the settlements is just better in the long run. As Asian Bob is going to take a dice roll of a seven... And thankfully, I only have seven cards. If I had one more card, I would have to burn four. And I'm surprised he didn't take from me. He took from red instead, but red only has two victory points, whereas I have four. Usually, the computer takes from the person who has more victory points. So I'm not quite sure on that one. But he did shut down a six sheep. Now, it is a great number, but it's not that good of a resource right now because I already have two sheep, and I'm not really needing a lot of sheep. I'm just needing brick and wood so I can keep building more roads or hopefully I could roll a four or a five because I'm I'm sitting on three stone and I could build a city as I roll a two and then red rolls a five so now I have to wait for Asian Bob and for blue to roll as my eight stone is shut down I would have gotten two more stone that would have been nice so I gotta wait for two more players to roll hopefully neither of them roll a seven Asian Bob did not he rolled an eight but if blue does not roll a seven and I don't roll a 7, then I will get to build my city. Now, blue rolled a 9, and I'm not built on a 9, so that only helps blue and red. As I roll a 6, somehow I avoid the 7. Every time more than 7 cards, I almost am guaranteed to roll a 7, but I get away with it. I build my city. So now we have two cities on the board, and as that dice roll comes in, with gives me two more brick, so there we go, I doubled my brick off of one roll because I have the city on a three brick. As Asian Bob builds two roads down to that 10 brick with the wheat port, 
So now I'm going to start building out because I have two cities that are going to start generating me a lot of resources if my numbers get rolled, of course. And at this point, if we look at it, I started out with six numbers. I think I'm still at six numbers. So I have a three, a four, a five. Oh, check out this Monopoly from Blue. I was like, okay, obviously my brick or my wood's getting stolen. Maybe sheep. If Blue has been following along, then I haven't really been spending it in my sheep, and maybe other people have sheep. Blue, they either monopolied stone or wheat, and I think got nothing because no other players had those, which to me was hilarious. If you just, all you have to really do is pay attention. You can even go back in the game log and see what people have gotten rolled and then see what people have spent the resources on. So you can just do a quick calculation. You do have a 90 second turn, but you have plenty of time to go in the game log if you're not sure uh, as to what people have in their hand resource rise. You don't know exactly what they have if you haven't been counting cards the whole game. But you can get a pretty good idea from the game log. And not a lot of people have been getting wheat. So that was a kind of a funny mistake on Blue's part. But you just got to pay attention. Honestly, that's all it comes down to. And thankfully, Red gives me a nice trade. They give me some wheat or some, some more sheep for one of my brick. Because I know I want a four for one in case when my turn comes around, my numbers haven't been getting rolled. But if we take a look and see what I have after I comment back to Blue about their uh, mistake in Monopoly. I have to burn cards, and I think I will get shut down this turn, but I have a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, an 8, and 11. So I still have just 6 different numbers, but I've made my way down to the brick port where I will gain a 9 and a 12. After I roll a 10 and get nothing, a lot of 10s got rolled this game. I, I The only reason I noticed it because I'm not built on a 10. I'm like, well, everybody else is benefiting off the 10, except for me and Blue. But I will see there goes a 9, and I would have gotten a stone off that 9, but I just wasn't quite yet built on that 9. So you, by building on this 9 and 12, I'm going to add two more numbers to my repertoire of diverse numbers. So I'll have a total of eight numbers out of the possible, I think it's, I think there's 10 different numbers in the game. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 10 different numbers you can gain resources from. There's 11 total because of the seven, and the seven usually gets rolled the most, but there's 10 different numbers you can be built on. If you were built on all 10, you would get resources from every single roll. Assuming the roll was not a 7, and assuming the roll was not a number that the robber was placed on. So it's a good idea to be built on as many different numbers as you can, because inevitably someone will shut you down, inevitably someone will use Monopoly on you, maybe not successfully, but they will try. And there goes a 12. I'm not built on a 12, but it's on a 12 sheep, so I'm not worried about it as red upgrades to a city. So red did the, you know, kind of a better idea as I get three wood off that 11. So now I could build three possible roads and just maintain my longest road because Asian Bob has four length road. So does blue. So I only have a five length road. So I do have a longest road, but it's, I barely have it. So red built up as I was saying, but the, sometimes the issue with building up is later in the game, you see red is kind of stuck, kind of trapped in the middle of the board. As soon as I build a settlement on that brick port down at the 9 stone 12 sheep, red is going to quickly run out of places to go build to. It's pretty much going to get trapped in the middle of the board and not really have any areas to go out to build any more settlements. Because you remember, your settlements have to be two roads away from any other settlement on the board or city. So that's really going to suck for for Red because essentially they can build up their last settlement at that 10 brick 9 stone to a city and have six points off their three cities and then have to play the development card game for the rest of the, the time to try to, as they, there, there they go, they built their third city, but now they have to try to play the development card game to 
build you know, either victory point development cards or try to get largest army. So you have to make up four more victory points just out of development cards, which you can do, but it, it can be difficult if you're just pulling a bunch of knights and then not any victory point cards. So that's going to be a long, you know, kind of drawn out process for red in order to win. And I'm already at eight victory points. So the fact that they can't just build two roads in a settlement somewhere is really going to hurt them. Now, they did pretty well in the first half of the game, but we're in the second half here. And building up and out is what's really going to take you to victory. Building up is good to get yourself set up. But now you're at this point later in the game where you are generating a lot of resources, but you can't really build out. So you just have a bunch of resources that you're just constantly trading in to get development cards. And it can help you, but sometimes, in this case, it's not going to help them out in terms of victory. So who I'm worried about is Blue and Asian Bob. Because Asian Bob has been building... Uh, they have one development card so far, but they are going to start building development cards and they will eventually take largest army and they have open space on the board to build to. So Asian Bob could build up a settlement on that stone port at the top of your screen. The resources aren't the good. It's a desert hex and a five sheep, but they do get a stone port and you see they have two cities on an eight stone. So having that stone port is very critical for their gameplay. And blue I'm worried about because they can easily take my longest road because they currently have a six length road up at the top left of your screen. And if they just keep going, they can uh, really get that going even more roads. And I'm sitting pretty with a seventh length road. And I'm going to decide to go ahead after blue's turn to build a road to on the four brick to touch their little road area where they have their eight wood their roads around that eight wood because i was kind of worried that blue was going to build one road off of their off the eight road hex to the four and then just take my sheep port because i kind of at this point i kind of would really like to have it because i do have a six sheep and a 12 sheep mainly for the six sheep but also to prevent blue from encringing into my area and I needed that one more road to just keep my continuous road going. So that was a kind of a crucial area for me to to build that one extra road to keep my sheep port safe for when I'm ready to build to it. I didn't need to build an extra road to build on the sheep port. I just built it to block blue from coming in there. So that's another little strategy you can do later in the game to kind of protect areas for you and also to keep your longest road even longer so that's pretty nice to do as another three is rolled now i'm at a point where i want to build a city on either the four brick 11 wood or the nine stone 12 sheep and after that i could eat, i could play the development card game or i could just build one more settlement and i'll be done and a good spot to do it would be at the 11 brick, I'm sorry, 11 wood, 12 sheep, just one road off of that, my little road system there to the, the wood port. But actually, now that I think about it, I'm just going to build my settlement on the four brick sheep port and then just either build a city or one more settlement and I'll be done because we're only playing to 10 victory points. This is not the Harbor Master scenario. This is just your basic a ton, your standard gameplay to 10 points. As of course I roll a 7, like I always do with more than 7 cards, 99% of the time. But thankfully I just the right amount of cards to burn off so I could keep the other 4 to build a city. I mean, sorry, a settlement. So I do the settlement. I'm at 9 victory points as Red is going to take their turn. And at this point, there's not re really much Red could do. They do have 3 development cards in their hand. And they might just build another one. Who knows how many victory points they actually had. I think you might be able to check on that in the post-game statistics. But it was just too little too late. Because of, of another 10's rolled. So it's going to you know, slow down the time it takes for me to win the game. 
As blue uses year of plenty, they get a stone of wheat. So I think they're going to do a... Oh, they do another development card instead of a city. So now they're playing the development card game late game. Now, if blue took my longest road, they would have bumped themselves up to nine vigor points and taken me back down to seven. So I really thought they were going to go for that. Maybe they were trying to get road building by building a development card, but that is just a very, you know, big shot in the dark to try to get that. So I would have thought that they would have just tried to trade in for a wooden brick to build more roads, but to each their own. As a nine is rolled, red gets four stone, no, sorry, six stone off a nine because they have two different nine stone hexes and they're just playing that development card game as hard as they can. They have five development cards, but because the game didn't end, four of those were not victory point cards as Asian Bob takes largest army and boosts themselves up to eight victory points. But Asian Bob can't get it done because down below... They cannot build on that wheat port because of where Red built their settlement and then upgrade to a city. They cannot build on that wheat port because they're not too away from any other settlement or city. And they can't take Longest Road. Okay, Blue gets another Monopoly, actually takes cards using it. So they took some stone. They now have 17 cards. I'm like, I don't want any of those. I don't want you to try to trade me back the stone you stole from me. You just trade it in, do your thing with it. Thankfully, they do not have a stone port. They only have a 3 for one port. And if you look, they have two 3 for one ports like we previously talked about. I think they're going to go try to build on that other one at the top of your screen. But they can't because they have five settlements on the board. So they have to upgrade to a, one to a city to free up a settlement to be built like back on the board again. So they're at eight points. And I... Again, they should not have built that uh, other development card early in the game. Well, I guess it was a Monopoly, so it kind of helped them. But they really should have been going for Longest Road. Because building up, up to a, a city was good for them. But here I am. I'm at the point where I'm going to win. And they should have taken my Longest Road to slow down my victory just enough for maybe them to steal it from me. But... As I'm uh, being cheeky, doing a Thanos quote, it was inevitable. The, all I had to wait for were the dice rolls to come in because I was built on so many different numbers besides that pesky 10, which I would have liked to be built on because it was rolled quite a bit this game, that I'm at the point where I just need to build two more roads in a settlement. I could have built just one more road, but I wanted to wagon wheel, wagon wheel my roads down around so I could just have a really long, continuous road and build my settlement on that 12 sheep, but it doesn't matter because I was building my 10th victory point for ultimate victory. Thanks for watching. Build on as many different numbers as you can when you play, and take care. Bye-bye.